Hello, almost 600 YouTube subscribers. I am Chillmonger, and this book was pretty good. Giant Size X-Men Storm. I got the Alex Ross variant cover, but you can't see that because it's all pictures from the comic in this review. We start with emotion. Russell Dodderman and Jonathan Hickman are really trying to make me feel sad for Storm right now, and it's not working. After the countless resurrections of Quentin Quire, Kate and her prolonged, I think it lasted five issues, but then Kate was appearing in other books and she was alive during that whole era. What am I supposed to feel about Storm's terminal illness? The answer to that question, I bet Jonathan Hickman thinks is answered in this book, but it wasn't answered in this book and we'll get there when we get there. Now, let me offer some counter things. If this terminal illness, this techno-organic virus that she has had a effect where it would not kill you, you'd still be alive, just lifeless. Now we're talking, that is stakes. But knowing that she'll be back, even if she dies, just doesn't provide stakes for me. And I will finish up on this thought towards the ending of the book. Instead, we get some slow movement, sitting down and talking. You know how I love my sitting down is and talkings. Um, Emma Frost, Storm, Jean, and Monet all showing up with the same face, Russell Dodderman. If I could complain about something, he draws the same face. We're never going to see this book uncolored, but I'd like to see what it did look when it was just pencils. But yeah, Monet is in this book. Monet is super powered, and Jonathan Hickman doesn't give her the Blue Marvel treatment. She is important, and he uses her. He uses Douglas Ramsey. He used Rockslide and Loa, Anoli. This guy, Jonathan Hickman, realizes this is the Marvel Universe, and this is the X-Men, and I'm going to treat it like it's a real universe. Therefore, every mutant has events in their life that happen. And some missions are better treated, and some stories are better treated for the lesser known mutants. And, and, and he's going to keep using them until they become not lesser known, just known. <laughs> he wants to use known mutants, and he knows the only way to get there is to elevate them, and he's not afraid to do that. He's not doing what happened in Iron Man. See that review when I post it. So they fly in to where this AIM agent is sleeping in his uniform. So if he's in this equipment and they never take off his helmet, you know he's somebody significant. Just keep an eye on that. He's going to lead them over to Phantom X. We read what happened in, in the giant size Phantom X. And these giant sizes are actually related, despite them all being numbered number one. We can consider them, at least this and that and the first one, connected. This is issue number three. And uh, these two are arguing over money, and Storm is mad, rightfully so. Wake up, guys. I thought she was going to do a lightning strike to, like, create gold somewhere on a mountain because chemistry. But no, nah, she was just angry, and that was just lightning. You know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing happens to everything else. So they enter the world, and there's already an ongoing battle. That was surprising. They just happen to sh show up where there's a fight. Okay, that makes it easier for us. And they'll slip by. They'll, they'll do a little bit of fighting, but they get to where they need to get to to figure out how they can heal Storm and separate this virus. The artwork of the fighting was amazing. I loved the way Warlock looked. Douglas Ramsey, Cypher, this guy. I liked how he looked, and I liked how Monet looked, of course. You can never go wrong with Storm. And Phantom X was whatever. I think he ran off. Yeah, he did. Aurora is going to create wind. Yes, create wind. And first time these machines have experienced that here in this little bubble. Blows everything away. It takes a lot out of her. She wakes back up. And man, the techno-organic virus on her face looks... It looks actually really cool. But uh, it doesn't stay for long. Because they get her up. And they take her inside. Where Phantom X is with this techno-organic thing. This isn't as bad as it looks. It looks pretty bad. It looks like you're cooperating with the enemy. I don't know what to think, but I am very nervous. So Storm's going to enter the diamond thing, and hopefully you're not past its ability to separate them. She wasn't. And she separated herself with the thing from the vault that infected her. She is completely healed. And here's where she asks questions. Why do what I'm doing? Why go through all this if I can let go and be resurrected? And in their background, there's more fighting, but we, let's just ignore that part. But she's asking these questions, what's the value of life? And she says the true measure of life is in the living. This felt very Barack Obama. She didn't answer. Here's what she didn't do. She didn't quell my eye roll. My eye roll, you know the roll, when 
Marvel threatens to take away a serious character who they've been putting a lot of stock into over the years and potentially could sell books when they pretend like this character is about to die and no longer be alive anymore. That, that was never satisfied. Yes, there is a reason to live. Of course, you want to fight to live. That's in the universe that, you know, in the fake universe that this is, within storyline, I understand why Storm wants to fight. But the suspense isn't there because I know if she did lose this fight, she would still be resurrected. And that's why I, the reader, was not emotionally invested in the survival of this character. And as long as these five mutants, Gold Balls and his crew, it's Gold Balls' crew, it's probably Hope's crew, honestly, but her, Tempest, and uh, two more I can't even think of right now. It's them. As long as they are there, I will no longer believe in the stakes of a death. I'll throw in a COVID-19 comparison here. Because it's probably not going to kill you if you're young or if your immune system isn't compromised. But you still don't want to get it. So I get why Storm wouldn't want to die. She is a mutant and I, and I want to live, she says. I'm better, see? Today, I've had my fill of machines. I'm done now. I understand Storm's desire to survive, but that did not quell my eye roll from rolling. It will keep rolling. It will breathe in, breathe out, hands up, hands down, back up, back up, tell me what you're going to do now. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Shout out to The Undertaker. Let's pause here now to talk about the X-Men series. You would think this would be bi-weekly. That's just the way that it's always been. Uh, similar to Amazing Spider-Man or Batman. This isn't bi-weekly, though. We have a monthly X-Men book. But Jonathan Hickman over here is writing books on the side. Giant size Magneto and things that are just sort of isolated stories. But wait a minute. Even his X-Men series is a series of isolated stories. One day they're here, and one day they're there, and sometimes it's this character, and now it's that character. Although issue 12 of X-Men came out, I would include these five giant size books as X-Men. We're really at issue number 17. If Jonathan Hickman is writing it, I would consider it part of the X-Men series. Even if marketing want to pretend like these are all number ones, because number ones sell. Honestly, they were better off just calling it X-Men, because I believe the sales, last time I checked eh, for March... The X-Men books were in the 70,000s. The giant size books wasn't. So, to conclude this now, the virus that was living inside of Storm that is now outside of Storm was acting up. The AIM guy says he was expecting this. He came prepared. He shoots a gun at her, at it. This technological construct that's been exposed to the same temporal forces that Storm was, there's no telling what it could have become if it expanded at will. Uh-oh. Powers of X. This is Powers of 10. This is the techno-organic, this is the phalanx, this is the beginning. They brought it from one temporal thing, where the, the vault, all the way over here to the world. And they saved Storm's life. She was better off dead, because this is going to domino effect into the biggest crisis known to mutants, known to mankind, Earth, humanity, and anything. This is the building box of it. And I thought, these guys are idiots. They're not idiots, they're stupid idiots, because Douglas Ramsey Cypher realizes it, has a conversation with it. I saw him do something fishy in one of the, in the Crucible issue of X-Men. Man, this guy is up to something, and I don't know why he's smiling. Yeah, I'll be seeing you too. Uh-oh. Very intrigued. So this is a good outing by Jonathan Hickman. A uh, $5 book, because stories aren't meant to be in 20 pages sometimes. And the best part about this is... The page with the sticker is at the end, and it did not interfere with my reading. Good job, Jonathan Hickman. Next up is X of Swords creation number one. That's in red. Let's read that. I'm Chill. Thanks for listening to this video. And if you don't thumbs me up right now, then you didn't thumbs me up right now.